<laughs> okay, Red. Okay. Got a way to poem. I got a way to poem. An amazing ingredient has been blended. Voice day problems have now ended. For those who've tried this miracle time, say the results are not good, but yet splendid. <laughs> G-I-D-D time. <laughs> From Hollywood, Procter & Gamble's Tide, the largest selling wash day product in America, proudly presents the Red Skelton Program. <laughs> With Red Skelton, David Rose and his orchestra are singing stars the four nights, Lorene Petal, Pat McGee, and Dick Ryan, Martha Wentworth, and John Holbrook, will be me, Rod O'Connor. Yesterday, our star was out of town. But to be sure that MGM's clown would be home in time for his Procter & Gamble program, he flew back to Hollywood. We now bring you that fly-by-night comedian, Red Skelton. <laughs> well, Mr. Fred, how do you feel today? Oh, I'm not myself. Oh, well, how does whoever you are feel today? <laughs> Well, sir, I went to the doctor and I waited three hours because there were ten cottons of cigarettes ahead of me. <laughs> that rehearsal, that was mine. How did you get there? <laughs> but no, I still didn't get to see him. Oh, you didn't? No, huh? I guess you have to be a cigarette to get any attention from a doctor nowadays. Oh, I see. Yeah. Hey, you know, I'm so skinny. Let's get some air and shoot it into that <laughs> joke, will you? <laughs> There's a joke that's ready for some air, believe me. <laughs> We'll give it a mercy killing right now. <laughs> you know, I'm so skinny. <laughs> well, you, hey, you know, now that this mercy killing, I've been waiting for a court order on that. Your mother-in-laws will drop like flies now. <laughs> no kidding. I'm going to take my mother-in-law over the filling station and shoot about 500 pounds of air in her. <laughs> Well, continue on. What were you saying then? Uh, I said, uh, I'm so skinny. You're skinny? You should have seen me when I was a little boy. A man shot at me with a double barrel shotgun and he missed me. Oh, yes? How could he miss you with both barrels? I stood in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't worry about your health. Well, you know, a body can't help but worry. Oh? Oh, I must look awfully bad. You can't feel too bad, brother. <laughs> I saw you uh, talking to a girl over at the bus stop. Oh, well, I, I, I only asked her the time. Yeah? You must be getting awful absent-minded, Doc. I saw you writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I was saying, I must look awful bad. You see, Junior, you know, Junior, that mean little kid, he was on the same bus, and he kept staring at me like I was some freak. Why didn't you look back like you weren't? Uh, <laughs> finally, finally, he pointed at me and yelled. He says, look, folks, they're burning them sitting up now. <laughs> Well, you should have said to him, I'll have none of your lip, upper or lower. <laughs> <laughs> that one came by carrier vision. <laughs> hey, uh, turn on the television set. I don't want to miss this pearl white cereal. <laughs> the Perils of Pauline. It's a new one on television. Now, hey, let me ask something. When you were a kid, do you remember any of our present day stars that are on television, those silent oh, picture people? now, now, Mr. Skelton, how old do you think I am? Well, um... Nah, you couldn't be. <laughs> now, is that any way to talk to your house boy? <laughs> you little <of> a boy. <laughs> this guy was a boy when Patrick Henry flew that kite with a, uh, a key on it. <laughs> now, in the first place, I'm not that old. And in the second place, it wasn't Patrick Henry. It was Benjamin Franklin. How do you know? I was there. <laughs> Oh, say, that must be Rod O'Connor. Oh, yeah. Yes, I forgot to tell you. He phoned that he was coming over. Well, if you didn't have to, it's right here anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> howdy, Fred. Uh, howdy. Hi. Well, come on, Skelton. Are you ready to go? Go? Go where? To the town hall meeting. They're having an open forum on taxes. Oh? Don't you want to put your two cents in? <laughs> How do you like that? After last Wednesday, he got everything but two cents. Now he wants me to give him that. <laughs> hey, you know what's so funny? This, this really hits me funny. <laughs> We pay politicians with tax money for the privilege to be told how much taxes we're going to pay. <laughs> Say, when I was a boy... Yeah. When you were a boy... <laughs> when you were a boy, there were no boys yet. Oh, well, just apples. Oh. <laughs> Look, if you need me, I'll be in my room. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Thank you, both of you. <laughs> You know, I'm glad your two relatives showed up. I mean, I... you know, he's a very kind-hearted guy. He made out of his will and left me $10,000.
Are you kidding? That guy hasn't got a red cent. Just shows you how kind-hearted he is. <laughs> well, what do you want to do about the meeting? Do you want to go? Sure, sure. Surely you know go. you have something to say about that tax problem, don't you? I most certainly do. Hmm? The present-day taxes are a politician's idea of capital punishment. <laughs> well, shall we go? Yeah, by the, I'll get my hat, and by the time Dave Rose and his orchestra plays My Blue Heaven, we should just about be at the town hall meeting. Tide is starting the new half century with a brand new miracle. Yes, now, with Procter & Gamble's Tide, you can get your whole family washed dazzling clean without rinsing. That's right, without rinsing. Here's why that's possible. Tide not only gets the dirt out of clothes, but keeps that dirt suspended in the wash water. Your wringer or spin dryer does the rest. As the water runs out, so does the dirt. You hang up a clean, fresh, white wash, one that dries soft and fluffy. That irons easily, that smells sweet and clean. And I mean clean. You all know about Tide with rinsing. Why, Tide actually gets clothes cleaner than any other washing product you can buy. Now discover this new miracle, Tide without rinsing. Honestly, the results will amaze you. Not to mention the time and work you will save. And remember, the Tide you pick up from your dealer's shelf today, in the same familiar package, gives you a dazzling clean wash without rinsing. Tide in, dirt out, T-I-D-E, Tide. T-I-D-E, Tide. <laughs> say, you know, this open forum on taxes should be interesting. Yeah, I hope Gene Fowler's there, boy. Yeah, say, how did you make out on your tax return? Any trouble filling it out? No, no, I do it the simple way. You see, I add up the date, my social security number, and my address, and that's what I send them. <laughs> <laughs> well, haven't there been any kickbacks? Yeah, last year they told me I couldn't deduct my zone number. <laughs> Well, taxes are really getting worse all the time. Yeah, oh, yeah. It doesn't even pay to write a book anymore. <laughs> you know, if taxes keep going up, by 1960, you'll earn $4,000 and you'll have to pay the government $5,000. Where will you get the other $1,000? Hmm? Where will you get that other $1,000? You go on relief. Huh? <laughs> hey, look, a parking space, a parking space. Oh, you can't park in that little space? Yeah, I can, sure. <laughs> Hi, 
tight squeeze, but I made it. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. Uh-oh. We're hey, stuck. let's hop in and get that Eddie Kaminsky book, huh? <laughs> We're stuck. What's the matter? Look who's creeping up on us. Polly the panhandler. Yeah, the Cinderella of Skid Row. <laughs> I wonder why she keeps wearing that old moth-eaten fur coat. It looks like something, somebody threw a dead cat at her. <laughs> hey, uh, what kind of fur is that, Ermin? No, vermin. <laughs> Sable dyed mouse. Howdy, gents. Hi. How would you like to donate to a good cause? I'm selling Girl Scout bagels. <laughs> You mean Girl Scout cookies? No, bagels. I loused up the recipe. <laughs> Say, don't throw that cigarette butt away, fella. Before Wait. I can bend down, somebody might beat me to it. <laughs> Just drop it in my shopping bag. Hey, that shopping bag looks as loaded as you. <laughs> what do you got in there, anyway? Well, enough to send me up for a couple of years. <laughs> Say, you wouldn't be interested in a nice watch, would you? No, I have. All right, give it back. Give it back. <laughs> happen to have a set of dentures on you, would you, youngster? I just thought of something funny, and I'd like to smile. You mean you don't have any false teeth? Sure, I got a pair right here in my bag. Why don't you wear them? Well, of course, I got them from a guy on the bus, and they're not my size. <laughs> Say, don't you have any false teeth of your own? Well, to have, yeah. but I had to hock them to buy food, and then when I got the food, I didn't have anything to chew it with. <laughs> no fun trying to gum a filet mignon. <laughs> oh, life has been cruel to me. Oh, really? Yeah, when I was a silent picture star, I used to drink nothing but champagne. Yeah, now I have to go in a bar and beg them to blow the foam off a glass of beer in my face. <laughs> Well, why don't you go live with your family? Well, I've been thinking about it. Ma and Pa hope to come into some money soon. They're digging a tunnel under the Bank of America. <laughs> Pasadena folks, huh? <laughs> yeah, they don't know that bank's been vacant for years. Oh, really? Wouldn't happen to have a paint sprayer on you, would you? I just noticed my makeup is all worn off. Well, you ought to get some putty and patch up those cracks in your face. <laughs> Hey, what made you like you are today, Polly? A man? Yeah, twelve. Twelve men were the cause of all my troubles, youngster. Twelve, twelve men. Stiffest jury I ever faced. <laughs> they wouldn't happen to have a moth fall on you, would you? I want to freshen up my breath. <laughs> Oh, no mothballs. No say, mothballs. Say, an could air you, wick. That'll yeah, help. could you youngsters see your way clear to loan me five bucks? I wanted to help my mother out with an operation. Now, wait a minute. I loaned you ten dollars last week for her operation. Well, I know, but operating a bookie joint is expensive. <laughs> Polly, aren't you going to attend the meeting of the town hall about heavy taxes? Yeah, oh, I certainly am, youngster. The thing that throws me are those estimated taxes. Oh. How can I estimate what I'm going to get when I can't tell how much is in the pocket I'm going to pick? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you in night court, youngster. Bye, Polly. They got quite a crowd here at the town hall. Yeah. Hey, look who's the doorman. Cauliflower McPug, that punch drunk prize fighter. Howdy, Cauliflower. All right, keep moving, folks. Keep moving. <laughs> uh, don't block the entrance, Bob. Don't block the entrance. <laughs> What are you doing? Oh, I've been hired for tonight in case there's any rough stuff. You see, I'm going to be the bouncer. All right, now, I told you to keep moving. <laughs> Who's standing over there in the lobby? Get the move on you. Cauliflower. Huh? <laughs> That's a statue. It is? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you would dress pretty dimpy, you know. Uh, you're not fighting tonight? Oh, no, you've seen me in the ring, huh? How about that? How about, how about that fight I had last night with that slug nutty guy? Oh, boy, the way I move around, that footwork, boy, did you ever think that clap your life? <laughs> what do you mean, that tiger flower knocked you out with the first punch? Yeah, but the way I laid there and took the punch, boy, how classy can you get? <laughs> boy, but the fight last night, I was framed. I was framed. They put me on the pot, boy. They put me on the pot. <laughs> Well, let me clear my out there, you know. <laughs> S-P-O-T, box. <laughs> if they framed me, I would frame. What happened? They made me fight them guy that was breathing. 
<laughs> Look, you, you better stop fighting before you get hurt. Me get hurt? Oh, I never get hurt, boy. May get murdered before I get hurt. <laughs> Hey, oh, come on, come on, yell out. Give something to the Salvation Army. I hear their tambourines coming in. <laughs> hey, look at me. How do you think I'll do in television with a node like this? I'm about kind of pushed in. How come it in handy for open beer bottles, though? You know? <laughs> well, it is a little crooked. Crooked? Everybody thinks I got my face tied in a bow, you know? <laughs> hey, do you think, uh, I can, uh, what do you think, how do you think I got this node? Hmm? In a fight? No, no. I was looking through a keyhole and some joker thought it was a key and turned it. <laughs> I tried to have my nose fixed, see, so they grafted some skin from my nose, my thumb to my nose, see? Well, it looks good. Yeah, but every time I hitchhike, my nose leans to the white. <laughs> and when I read a book, it always wants me to help turn pages. You know? <laughs> hey, but I'll look good on television, boys. You'll never know when I'm out of focus, you know. <laughs> Are you uh, doing any fighting these days? No, no, they don't call me much anymore. Mm. Well, maybe you're not in condition. Oh? You should reduce. Why? Not only are you punchy, but you're punchy. Oh, not cute, not cute. <laughs> no plate burn here, but not cute. I've heard funnier things on We the People. <laughs> hey, stop whittling, will you? Stop whittling. I'm not whistling. Well, then get out of the way. A train's bearing down on us. <laughs> Boy, what a crumb bum. Oh, you, you mean that guy I fought last week at White City in Chicago? Oh, boy, he sure was. Uh, that was sort of a mysterious fight, though, you know? Mm-hmm. At the end of the second round, my manager said to me, he said, stay in there, kid, stay in there. He said, this boy not touching me. Not even laying a glove on you, boy. What a mysterious thing this was. Well, uh, what's so mysterious? Well, if that guy wasn't laying a glove on me, that place was haunted because somebody was beating my brain down. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've got news for you. That happened a long time ago. Oh, you think I'm punchy, huh? Well, you ought to see some of them other fighters. They're always hearing bells and birds, you know. All the time, them poor punch drunk guys. Answer the phone. <laughs> Glad to meet the new champ. <laughs> I don't have to answer the phone. A little bird will pick up the receiver in a minute. Answer the phone. Answer the phone. Poor, simple soul. <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of them punch drunk fighters, he won't admit it, you know. <laughs> oh, humor you along. Hello? 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 You'll have to talk louder. The courthouse chimes are so loud I can hardly hear you. Ah, hang up, will you? Hang up. Okay. Who was it? It sounded like a canary playing a telephone, you know. <laughs> oh, brother, you get worse every day. You ought to catch me some night. <laughs> you know, you're really gone. You better quit. Quit what? The ring. Well, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Yeah, they, uh, the meeting must have started. They got some switch bell ringers on the show. How about that? Huh? Oh, spring is here early this year. And the first robin I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he brought a whippoorwill with him. How do you like that? Uh, Jack, what you want? You tapped me on the shoulder? No, I didn't tap you on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, it must have been Speedy then. <laughs> Speedy, he's, a, he's always playing jokes on me. Who's Speedy? Very fast guy, very fast guy. He tapped me on the shoulder all the time, see, and when I turn around, he never knew. <laughs> oh, boy, how punchy can you get? You think I'm punchy? You ought to see some of them wrestlers down at Jesse McLeod's gymnasium, boy. <laughs> them beauty parlor battle, battlers, uh, battlers down there, you know. Mm-hmm. They're so punchy, they're afraid to walk downstairs, and they slide down the banister all the way from the tenth floor. Well, what's wrong with that? There's no ten floors in that gymnasium. <laughs> Bad. Yeah, last time I sat down that banister, I got some splinters, you know. <laughs> going south, splinter going north, you know. <laughs> grab a milk pail, I hear a cowbell. <laughs> Look, I better go in and grab a seat. The meeting is starting. I'll see you later, McFarland. Okay, I'll see you around, boys. <laughs> hey, Rod, Rod, come on. Here, here's a seat. Get in here. Here he is, here he is. This town meeting will now come to order. Friends, before we get to the purpose of this town hall meeting, subject taxes, the four knights heard on the Red Skeleton program <laughs> will favor us with a little song entitled, There's an X in the Middle of Texas. There's an X in the middle of Texas, and that X marks the spot I can't forget. Exactly where we met. I crossed my heart beneath the lone star above and 
promised I would kiss no one but you. There's an X in the middle of Texas, where my extra special dreams have all come true. X marks the spot where my heart will always be. The eyes of Texas are upon us. Everywhere we roam, the eyes of Texas are upon us, and they're calling me back home to that X in the middle of Texas. And that X marks the spot I can't forget. There's an X in the middle of Texas. Is exactly where we met. I cross my heart, meet the lone star above, and promised I would kiss no one but you. There's an X in the middle of Texas, hey, where my extra special dreams come true. Lady, you can now cut your wash day work in half with Tide. Because with Procter & Gamble's Tide, you can now get your wash dazzling clean without rinsing. You see, Tide gets the dirt out of clothes and keeps that dirt suspended in the wash water. Ring out the water, the dirt goes too. Your clothes are fresh, white, clean. You know how clean Tide has always gotten your clothes with rinsing. Cleaner than any other washing product known. Now, try Tide without rinsing. The results will amaze you, and you will save time and work. Yes, this is the latest and greatest miracle of the same wonderful Tide you've always used. Every package of Tide now on your dealer's shelf will wash clothes dazzling clean without rinsing. That's right, the Tide on your dealer's shelf right now in the same familiar package will wash clothes dazzling clean without rinsing. So try Tide tomorrow. to discuss the ever-rising incentive killer, security robber, taxes. Now, our first speaker will be... Me? Well, I want the back <laughs> Willie, please sit down. Well, I'm going to stand up. As a friend, I'm warning you. Yeah. As your wife, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> order, order. What's that? Order. Why don't you get some writers, boy? You think I'm going to say I'll have a glass of beer, you're nuts. Henry, are you qualified to speak on this subject? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Everything is taxes nowadays. Everything. Now, you take my wife in. Would you take my wife in? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, I know Mr. Lump Lump. Yeah. And if it pleases you, Your Honor, may I direct my questions to the speaker? Who's this bum? I never saw him before in my life. <laughs> never saw him before in my life. I repeat, I have never seen him. <laughs> but it's okay, buddy. We're all friends here. We're all friends. Let's get on with the activities. Mm -hmm. I suggest that we play trick or treat. <laughs> this is not Halloween. You mean that face my wife had on at the breakfast table this morning was real? <laughs> oh, Willie, you're cruel. Oh, I used to say I was the apple of your eye. Yeah, but you fermented. <laughs> now, the purpose of this meeting is to discuss taxes. Yeah. Are you against taxes, Willie? Well, right now I'm up against them. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I've been so busy figuring out my declaration of estimated tax, my income tax, my state tax, my property tax, my city tax, my county tax, I haven't had enough time to go out and earn my work for a <laughs> Well, uh, what do you think of the hidden tax? What's that? I say, what do you think of the hidden tax? I'm in favor of hiding all of them. <laughs> Everything goes with me, boy. Uh, did you ever get a refund? Yeah, I got a refund once. They send my shirt back to me. <laughs> they said, wash it and send it back. <laughs> Billy, if you don't sit down, I'm going to light a match and hold it under your nose and blow your brains out. <laughs> You're wilting my carnation. <laughs> Look, if you don't let me talk about uh, these high taxes, you can tell your mother to pack her racing form and get out. Uh, 
Mr. Lumplum. Yeah? Do you find the taxes to be an infringement on your future yeah, security? Yeah, don't play. You're married to oh boy. Oh. How long have you been married? I was married during the war. A military wedding? There were guns there. <laughs> Power. Uh, very weak, very weak. Very weak. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, my, it goes into the four figures, you know, my wife and three relatives. <laughs> How much do you earn? Well, I get $50 a week, and my wife gets $50. Well, that's 100 No, it's the same 50 See, I earn it, and she gets it. <laughs> that was up until last year. This year, I haven't earned a dime. I haven't earned a dime. For a, for a guy that has no income, you look very healthy. Well, you see, I had a big meal three months ago, and I chewed it very slowly. <laughs> Oh, come now. Uh, you have to eat or you couldn't stay alive. Well, you see, I'm a television hobo. Television mm-hmm. hobo. You see, every night I go to somebody's house and look at television and I fill up on potato chip, popcorn, and peanuts. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this so long I can't eat unless I'm looking at Uncle Oscar Godfrey. You, know? well, you must know a lot of people to be invited to see television every night. Don't know anybody and who's invited. I just walk up the street until I see a house with all the lights out and an antenna on the roof, and I know I've hit a live one. Thing. <laughs> so I ring the doorbell, and somebody opens up the door, and it's dark. They can't see who I am. They figure I'm a friend. They whisper, come on in, come on in. Don't talk, though. You'll mess up Uncle Milty's jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel around in the dark till I come to the bowl of popcorn and the peanuts. I sit down and have my fill. See? Well, uh, what happens when the television shows are over and they turn the lights on? Oh, I just lay out there in the gutter thinking of a wonderful time I had. <laughs> Only someone who is crazy could know what you're talking about. Come again? I say only someone who's crazy could possibly know what you're talking well, about. Well, I'm glad we understand each other. But... <laughs> now, about taxes. You don't pay them? I don't pay taxes. I do that to clear myself. Well, I don't follow you. You do, I'll have you arrested because you don't look right to me, boy. <laughs> I don't pay taxes, see? And that way the tax department and me have a big fight. Then it becomes a war debt. And, brother, everybody knows that's something you can never collect on. <laughs> yeah, and if you're one of those guys trying to trick me into telling why I don't pay, really pay my taxes, you're in trouble, boy. I knew they would be because you just don't look right to me. <laughs> you just don't look right. I've seen a lot of people in my day, but you just don't look right to me. I said it once, I said it again, you just don't look right. <laughs> well, 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 how are you feeling, Willie? I don't feel a thing. Right, shall we go? Yes, by all means. You folks will uh, excuse me, please. <laughs> thanks for being with us, and until next Sunday, this is Red Skelton saying goodbye now, and thanks for listening, and thanks for buying more and more of the Woisty Miracle Tide. Tide in, dirt out, T-I-D-E, Tide. Beautiful natural softness, exciting natural sheen. Don't just wash your hair, condition it with new dream. It's here, a shampoo that conditions your hair. Conditions your hair to natural softness, natural sheen. It's new dream shampoo, now with beauty conditioner. No other shampoo has this new beauty conditioner. It's an exclusive cleansing agent found only in gentle new dream. Don't just wash your hair. Condition it with New Dream. New Dream Shampoo. Now with Beauty Conditioner. Try it. Red Skelton has heard in this program to the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer. This program is a copyrighted feature. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>